And Steve, what can you tell us about the history of bearings? People would like to think that there's some cave wall where someone happens upon and they see someone who invented the bearing. But actually, bearings have evolved with the wheel, the uh, ability to take rolling elements, putting them between two points of friction. Whether it be uh, pulling along chariots in old time Egypt, uh, which we have some great sketches of, to evolving to the first drawings made by Leonardo da Vinci of what he thought a bearing should be. But the real breakthrough in terms of bearings came in the late 1800s when steel evolved, got, became much more viable, easier to use and form. With that came the ability to take balls or rollers, put them between uh, the housing or shaft dimensions, and create a more accurate turning. So the first bearings that were used in industry were in textile machinery, pro wood processing, and so on. So the history now, even though bearings look the same, they're still evolving. The steel is better. The ability to process the equipment has improved. The one nice thing about the history of bearings is that in the mid-1920s, two organizations, the a ABMA and the ISO standards from Europe got together and created a worldwide numbering system so that like aspirin conforms to a standard, so do bearings. They typically go up in five millimeter increments so that if you get a bearing from whether it be made in Europe, Japan, Asia, Brazil, Russia, if it's a 1205 bearing, well, that's what it is. It's a 25 millimeter bore. It has, it's a self-aligning bearing with a relatively large OD. But the history of bearings, while it has evolved, it still remains true to the original uh, standards of the 20s and 30s, which really pushed the Industrial Revolution forward because it allowed people to replace a bearing if they were taking out a 1205 bearing, they could go to their local store, put one in, and they knew it would be to the same standard.